You know there's people that make a million dollars? Man, let me share this. Write it down. Write down the list. The more the merrier. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Ricky Caroo! He is an investor, a speaker, and soon to be remembered, in my opinion, as a legend in the industry. The cool thing about what he was doing was he was documenting everything. Like he would post his calls, his work he was putting in, the strategies, he was sharing everything. You've got two or three that's really working well, but you're scared of the business you might lose by not doing the other seven or eight. No buyers, agents, no listing. It's me, I was all them. Why would you use social media to attract buyers to your business when you could attract sellers to your business? You can do more and less time with property owners. Not for listings necessarily, they're the best buyers. Every time I moved, it was because I just was bumping the top of where I was. We have a choice to create our own quality of life. And I don't believe everybody understands that. We're going to be around 4 million transactions. This is 2008, ladies and gentlemen. You're here. OK, so for the main attraction, I need everyone to get up. Get up, get up, get up. Let's get some Miami energy. Let's play that walkout song. What, what walkout song we got? Let's hear that song. He's where he started, made it, lost it, made it back. Now in this industry, he is the largest. A lot of these coaches are teaching you garbage. Ricky, he does it for free, doesn't charge it. Got the sauce like he needed some tartar. Was broken, homeless, sleeping in the car and people's couches. It Give was it hard and people doubted. Then he started over complicate the process. And my beautiful so wife. Give it up for her as well. Talk to people you don't know to get a lot of deals and hours. Thank you guys. Make some noise. We, uh, we've been to Sarasota, Vegas, and here all just in the last 30 days. So we have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. What I do with the clicker? Here we go. Yeah, so we, we, we travel a lot. We've been to Vegas, Sarasota, and now here just in the last 30 days. So we're, we're on the move. But we love Miami, all right? We left here. We went to the uh, sea, sea uh, Aquarium. Sea Aquarium? Yeah, Sea Aquarium. Went there yesterday. This is the only place in the world. That's why we love it so much. It's the only place in the world you can leave here. It takes me 30 minutes to get there. And then an hour and a half to get back to the same spot. God, we love Miami. I was like, we got, we got to be at dinner at 5, so if we leave at 4.30, we'll be good. It's a 30-minute drive. Now, let's, let's, let's test you guys. How many people here want to make a million dollars? Okay. So how many of you guys are following me already? Okay. Anybody not following me? Okay. Are you, are you okay? <laughs> so I got in in 2002. I'll make this short. Made a million dollars, lost it, and then built my business back to a million dollars a year. So you're going to learn from somebody who has actually did it. And I think that's very important. All right. In 2016, I said, man, let me share this. Because actually, I hired a coach, and I was like, this sucks. I need to coach because I can do better than this. The way that I built my business is very unique. I said, I have to share this. Let me write some books. Let me start speaking, writing coaching. And eventually, became the first completely free real estate coach in the world. zero to diamond. And the, the entire mission was, let me teach everybody how to do this for free in an attempt to reduce the failure rate in the industry one agent at a time, right? Now, question, hands. How many people here feel like they wouldn't even be in the industry if it wasn't for zero to diamond? Stand up. I want to see you. Go ahead, stand up. How many? How many? How many? So uh, we, we reduce the failure rate in the industry right now in this room. Give it up for them. <laughs> 
Now, making a million dollars a year, right? Let's think about it. How many people actually make a million dollars a year in the industry, right? Less than 1% of 1%? Would you guys agree? The question is, is do you believe that that is the only amount of people that is, there's room for to make a million dollars a year? That's what we have to wrap our head around. And I mean, I, okay. If you, if you don't look at me and think, if he can do it, I know a million percent I can do it. Okay? Every single one of you guys can make a million dollars a year. Can we put that out on the table? Can we believe that? So if we're going to believe it, then how do we do it? And that's what I want to talk about today. Okay? The top 1% of 1% who make a million dollars a year, they've really nailed down this one skill, this, this one thing. And that's what I want to cover today. Are you ready? Okay. Calm down. First thing I want you to do is I want you to think about all the different ways that you generate leads. Okay? Think about it right now. Think about all the different ways that you generate leads. Kind of make a list in your mind for a second. Cold call, sphere of influence, social media, right? Break all those down into, uh, you know, sub Sub levels, you know, you know, circle prospecting, expireds, you know, Instagram stories, ads, Zillow, whatever it is, right? Okay, you got it. You got your list. Take two seconds and write it down on your phone. If you don't have a, if you're not taking notes, write it down. Write down the list. The more, the merrier. How many lead gen activities are you involved in right now to build your business? Just write it down. I'll give you a sec. Oh, uh, this is going to be a semi-workshop to help you visualize, and I'm going to change your entire business right now today. Because as you guys are writing this down, just to let you know, this is, this is life or death to me. That's how much I eat, sleep, and breathe trying to help people succeed. When I go to sleep at night, tonight, I'm going to know I did everything I could do to help you go out and make a million dollars a year. Whether you feel for your end of the bargain of that over the next three to five years is on you. It's not going to be on me. That's why when you guys hear me up here, hear me on a video, see comments where I'm slashing back at people, because when you get close to 100,000 subs on YouTube, the freaks come out. <laughs> a guy on Instagram the other day said, you're a, you're a little, um, what, what was the word he used? Um, you know, you're, you're a little aggressive one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? You've not seen my Zoom calls? <laughs> Have you not seen me on stage answering questions? I'm the same person online, in person, rich, poor, I'm the same guy. You got your list? Okay. How many people have one thing on their list? Two. Okay. Three. Four. Over five. A lot of you didn't raise your hand. What's up? Is, there, is that zero? Okay, you've got your list. This is how you build your business. You guys know this is the front end of your funnel. Without this, there's no business. Of course, we have to get the next part of the funnel and the next part, and we have to get to conversion, and we have to get to the deals. But if this isn't happening, what we just wrote down, we're not going to get there. Now, lead generation for the next generation. This, this mic is weird. I feel like I'm wearing a crown. I'm at like America's beauty pageant or something. Never wore the. What do you guys think is lead generation now? What do you think is the lead generation for the next generation? AI. Talking to people. What's that? Belly to belly. 
Damn. Damn. You want to buy a house? Like, do you have, do you have an agent? <laughs> Social media, man, it got to be. So when I was asked to speak about this for another group, I looked at that and I thought, what in the fuck is that? Do they want me to teach agents how to attract Gen Z to their business to buy and sell? Or they want me to teach Gen Z how to, how to generate leads? I didn't know. So I was like, I'm just going to talk about what I want to talk about. Here's my point. I felt like it was how to help Gen Z build their business, how to help Gen Z prospect, okay? And I feel like in this world, in this landscape, there's too many things. There's too many options, okay? So it brought me to want to speak on efficiency behind lead gen, okay? Now, this is the part I want you to get. Efficiency in lead gen. For me, this is lead generation for the next generation. Because if you can get this, then you can actually build a, ma a masterful business. The ability to focus on just a few lead gen activities. To produce more results in less time, sacrificing business, sacrificing business in other lead gen activities. Now, let's think about it for a second. If I'm doing five, the reason why a lot of you do five, ten things, because why? You've got two or three that's really working well, but you're scared of the business you might lose by not doing the other seven or eight. And the time you spend on the seven or eight is taken away from the two or three that's crushing it for you, and you, you stay average. If you ask a top producer at the end of his career, how did you do it? What was your lead gen? How many lead gen activities do they normally say? One. One. I did it Zillow. I did it circle prospecting. I did it social media. And by the way, there's not a single, name the weirdest lead gen activity you ever heard of. <laughs> belly to belly. <laughs> belly to belly. <laughs> belly to belly. That is the strangest one I ever heard. But you know what? You know what? I guarantee you there's an agent out there that made a million dollars belly to belly. <laughs> and they could write a book on it. How to make a million dollars in real estate belly to belly. First off, eat a lot of hamburgers <laughs> and pizza. Don't go to the gym. Spend all of your time. <laughs> Oh, my God. My point is, is there, there's not a single lead gen activity, okay? People say, cold call don't work. You know, social media sucks. Uh, you know, they talk trash about these other lead gen activities. You know there's people that make a million dollars with what you're talking about sucks? There's not a single activity that I've ever heard, even the craziest stuff, that has it. There's not an agent that made a million bucks a year doing it hundreds and thousands of them, not a single one. Understand that, that it all works. It may not work for you, and this is where the work lies, is figuring out what works for you. I can tell you what my, you know, at the end of the, my career, what was it? Circle prospecting. One thing, did I dabble in expires? Did I dabble in social media? Did I dabble in for sale by owners and Zillow? Did I dabble? Did I dabble? Yes, I was always testing. But what was my bread and butter that I spent 90% of my time on? What was working for me? Circle prospecting, calling random property owners, getting to know them, expanding my influence into the market, emails and postcards. That's it. That was me. That's how I made a million bucks a year. And guess what? I ignored social media. I didn't start doing social media until I started coaching. I still don't do social media in my real estate business. It goes to my point exactly. Here's what's working. Everything works. Here's what's working for Ricky. 
I know I'm probably losing business by not doing social media, but I'm okay sacrificing. I'm okay sacrificing that business in social media to focus on just a few so that I can produce more in less time. Efficiency. It's like selling 100 properties a year as a single agent. I did that for eight years in a row with an assistant. No buyers, agents, no listing. It's me. I was all of it. And at, towards the end of that, like the last two years, guess how many hours I was working a week? 10 to 20 at the most. Why? Because I did exactly what I'm going to share with you today. And I built my snowball up to the point where I'm not going to ruin the ending but it's called efficiency and realizing efficiencies. Now, how many of you use social media to build your business? How many of you don't use social media to build your business? Okay. How can you not either use or not use social media? <laughs> the ones that are using social media, are you using it to attract buyers to you? Raise your hand, the people that did social media. If you're using it to attract buyers to your business. Okay. The, quest, the question lies, would you rather have 30 listings okay, or 30 active buyers? 30 listings. Okay. Would you rather have 30 active buyers? Not the listings, but 30 active buyers. You would rather have 30 active buyers than 30 active listings? No, no, no. I said one or the other. Okay, anybody want the buyers over the listings? No one, okay? So why would you do so? Why would you use social media to attract buyers to your business when you could attract sellers to your business? It goes back to efficiency. Efficiency to me is who, who's my audience? Who am I prospecting? Make some noise real quick. I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling something. I'm feeling something. Some type of way in here. It's, it's the air. It's, it's the salt. Efficiency. Property owners. Okay? Now, why did nobody raise their hand for buyers? Because you know that property owners are the most efficient. You can do more and less time with property owners. Not for listings, necessarily. They're the best buyers. They only need education. They just, they're just like, I want to buy this, Ricky. Will you do the contract? Yeah, I'll do it. Of course. It, as opposed to a Zillow lead, which God bless you, <laughs> where I'm driving around town. We all are going to make money at six, seven, <laughs> at six, seven o'clock at night. I went to Michael Jackson in Vegas, so I'm kind of, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we all make money at six or seven o'clock at night as in real estate. The question is, are you at home chilling with your family, eating dinner, relaxing with not a worry in the world because 8 of your 21 listings are being shown by an agent that does YouTube videos to attract buyers to their business? We have a choice to create our own quality of life. And I don't believe everybody understands that. We just think, buyers, so money, do deals. No, it's unlimited. You cannot handle every single deal. Can you handle 100 pending deals at once? Anyone? No. There's a breaking point. So it comes down to how much can you handle? That's all it comes down to. I, I refer to it as my cup. How big is my cup? How much can I handle? I'll tell you what mine was. I could handle 20 to 30 active listings and 10 to 15 to 20 pending deals at once. That was my happy place. I'd stayed there for years and years and years. That's where I love to be, right there. I didn't want any more. I didn't want any less. You got to find your happy place. Some people have two pending deals and four listings, and their week is shot. And I don't know what they do for 40 hours a week doing that. I literally scan through my pendings and scan through my, my listings every day, like, okay, do I need to call them? Do I need to do this? And I call the title company. I'm going to call the buyer and catch up on that, whatever. It took me like 30 minutes to go through all my deals, and now I got seven and a half hours to get more stuff under contract and list more properties. Efficiency. Not letting stuff hang you up forever. Let's see. Volunteer. Don't be scared. 
You. Good looking sir in the back standing up. Half. Well, uh, listen, I can't see you yet. How many active buyers and sellers are you working with right now? Got it out the door, parking lot, your car's there. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> This seminar is not for you, bro. <laughs> Shoot them. All right. How many active buyers and sellers are you working with? Okay. The most common answer is four. Every time I ask that, the most common answer is four. Four, 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 four. You guys realize statistically that's 0.8 deals? You think you're working on four deals. Your statistic, you might, two or three of them might buy something this time. Statistically, the average is 0.8. So you're work, if you're working on four, you're working on nothing. But it's a fact. If you want to close one deal, one deal a week, who wants to close one deal a week? It's real simple. 15 to 20 active buyers and sellers at all times. You want to close two deals a week, you do what I did for eight years. You have 25 plus active buyers and sellers that haven't moved forward, that haven't ghosted you, that aren't under contract or listed, that are thinking about doing a deal with you. It's real simple. So how do we get the active buyer and seller? We multiply that till we have 10 to 15. We keep it at that level. We close one deal a week. This is not hard, ladies and gentlemen. And trust me, I grew up in a trailer in Alabama. If I can figure it out, then you can do this. Make some noise for the Alabama Hall. Beautiful organic trailer. How many people are scared to talk to people? Why are you in real estate? The entire, this entire career, you're, you, the, you got a real estate license. It's hundred percent predicated on you talking to people you do and don't know, mostly that you don't know, to help them buy and sell real estate. But you're scared to talk to people? This is your job. Now, and this, th this is the reason why most people will never get to a million dollars a year. Right here. The only thing between you and a million dollars a year are thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in your market. Is that easy and it's simple to understand or what? It's really that easy and simple. I don't care how you do it. Use social media, use Zillow, cold call, direct mail. Door, I don't care how you do it, guys. I don't know how to make that any more clear than, than I can. But you better figure something out because you can drag the thousands of conversations over the course of your entire life and never get there, which is what most people do. Or you can cram those thousands of conversations into three to five years and get to the million so that then what? But good, this brings up a whole new thing. When you get to the million, then what? Nothing. Most people, most agents are only focused on getting to be the top and they don't have, they don't even think about afterwards. When in fact, when you get to the top, guess what? You made a million bucks, woo hoo. January 1st comes, what did it go from a million to zero? And now you got to work and climb that million dollar mountain all over again. It's very daunting because you get paid only based on if you, you're only good as your last sale. So now we have to start thinking, what would that next thing be? Because I don't want to be in this rat race forever, but you're never going to get out of it. If you don't understand, we got to get there fast and then we go to the next thing. A lot of you are thinking, I'm going to make a million bucks and retire. So therefore you're basically setting your goal up to hit a million bucks by the time you're what, 70, 80, 90? No, let's get there in the next three to five so that we can actually get to the part where it's fun. Oh. Okay, real quickly this, and then I'm gonna talk about that. When I lost everything in 2008, I was sleeping in my car, I was homeless, eating out of people's refrigerators, bankrupt, roofing houses, working on an oil rig. I thought I was a real estate mogul and all of a sudden I'm sleeping in my car. But thank God I was in my mid-20s 
because I was learning the same lessons as people in their 40s, 50s, and 60s that were right next to me doing the same stuff. But what did I learn through all that? One, closings never stop. It's like right now. This is 2008. You guys realize this? Prices haven't crashed, but transactions are at 2008 levels. You realize this? How many people are keeping your head above water right now? And if you're not raising your hand, you're just not, you're about to quit the business? Right now is so crucial because it's a rubber band and the further it gets pulled back, the harder it snaps. I'm gonna show you a diagram in just a second, but the second thing was relationships over transactions. I didn't get this in the first part of my career. I was just calling 10 people who wants to make 200,000 a day. Oh, you will, one out of 10. I'll list it, sell in a day, close, make 20, 30 grand, never talk to you again, and just call 10 more people. I thought that was how the business was done. They didn't want to stay in touch with me because they're not rebuying into an inflated market and I didn't need them because I could just call 10 more people. It was a false sense of how the business actually works to build a career. And speaking of careers, in 2026, are you going to care what you made in 2023 or four? At that time, are you going to care what you make in 2026? 26. We need to be thinking every, every single thing that we do needs to come back to how does this blow my 2026 up? Because that, that's all I, I paid to be here. I didn't get paid to be here. I paid to be here. Why? Because I know everybody in this room is going to do business with me in 2026. And I'm willing to invest my time and money on my 2026 self. You need to be thinking about the same thing in your real estate business. You heard everything that I've been talking about three to five years to have the thousand conversations to get to the million dollars. I want to help you guys build your career. I could give a shit about 23 or 24. I want you to have a great 24, but I want you to understand those are seed planting years. That's not going to be the year. We're going to crush it. We're going to have our best year ever. But that's just, that's just, that's not even, that's just surface level. We're not even breaking the ice. There's such bigger things. And I want you to start thinking this way. When I got back in the business in 2008, which by the way, <laughs> okay. When I got back in the business in 2008, how hard do you guys think it is to sell a property in 2008? If you think it's hard, make some noise. Okay. If you thought it was easy, make some noise. It was the easiest thing in the world to sell property in 2008. Why? 50% off. You know how easy it was to sell property in 2008? Much easier than today. At these all-time high crazy prices that are going to continue to go up, by the way. You've got YouTube gurus and he even mainstream outlets who indicate prices drop in 20, 30%, right? What would happen? How many people here have buyers who are waiting on prices to go down? Raise your hand. <laughs> Let me just ask you, if prices drop 20, 30%, what's that going to do to your business? Blow up. Your business is going to explode. So I say that to say this, you win either way. You can't lose in this business. And part of the reason why a lot of you aren't crushing it is because you aren't committed to the business because you don't know if it's going to work. You're scared the market might crash. You're scared the, the, the NAR lawsuit's going to go through. Our agents are going to go away. You're scared that you know, something's going to replace us and AI is going to come in and whatever. All of those things enhance the opportunities for you to crush it. And so... Thanks, mom. And so if you could, if you could, if I could take that, that lack of confidence that you have in the market to allow yourself to go all in because you're worried about external factors, then you, and, and, and you actually take that opportunity to go all in, 
you will be a force to be reckoned with. Why? Because hardly anyone does that. In 2008, I realized that nothing can take me out, that I'm good. That's when I went all in on the business and you're not going to crush it until you come to that realization. Makes sense, right? So did all of you come to that realization right now? Are you gonna go all in on your business? God, I hope so. God, I hope so. When I think about relationships over transactions, this is career building language. This isn't sales. This is service. This is helping. This is building a career where you can actually make a million. The only way to make a million dollars a year, guys, is from the compounding of your database over time, right? You, you're not going to make enough cold calls in a year to make a million bucks unless you're selling $10 million properties or something like that. When you build a business where your database is so large that you never have to prospect again in your life, what kind of business is that called? Do it so like one. Pipeline, referral. A sellable business. <laughs> so the Alabama comes out of me every once in a while. <laughs> Generational. A million dollars. All right. So it's called a residual business. Okay. It, it produces deals without prospecting. That's the definition of residual. Got it? Now, what's the objective of a residual business? Make it plenty without worry. What's that? That's all pretty good. That's actually all pretty good. I'm not gonna make fun of anybody this round. <laughs> the objective of creating a residual business is to invest into passive income, such as rental properties, for example. <laughs> now, we think about you know, making a million bucks. Do you think about what you're going to do after that? <laughs> Work your ass off, try to make a million bucks again every year. You have to be thinking about this. There's going to come. How many of you want to sell real estate till the day you ever living die? <laughs> really? You want to sell real estate? You want to show property? You want to go to list appointments? You're going to do all that till the day that you die? No. I watched two agents make phone calls till they died. Not a joke. Died of old age in their 70s and 80s. Found out they were dying. Legends in our area, incredible guys, mentors of mine, found out they were dying. Guess what? in the office the next day calling expired for sale by owners. We're like, what the hell is going on? Like, is, is this the ghost of Bob? <laughs> and my broker's like, he's, he's doing that. He knows he's dying, but he wants to leave his wife as much as possible, right? Made calls till three days before he actually died because he couldn't get, that was the point where he couldn't get out of bed and then he died. What? I watched it happen with my own eyes. And that was huge for me. I'm not going to live like that. Let's see. I, I can't remember that exact year that that happened. 14, 15, it was in there. A couple years later, I'm like making videos, coaching, trying to build a brand, build businesses outside of real estate sales, buying rental properties. Right? We have to be thinking about this. Because even if you want to sell real estate till the day you die, because I said, I'll sell real estate till the day I die. I love it. Until the day came that I didn't. I hope none of my past clients are watching this right this second, but <laughs> they would call me million dollar deals. I look at the phone, I'm like, oh, 
God. Didn't want to answer it. Cringed when deals were coming in that would make me twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars, and I'm cringing. And that comes from twenty years of grinding my ever living face off to build this business. And all I could think about the whole time was a million dollars a year. But the day is going to come when you cringe, when you see that client calling, and you're going to wish to God that you had, number one, had thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in your market and built a brand, sent a weekly email on the same day of the week forever so they never forget who you are, and they do business with you forever so that you can make a million bucks working 20 to, uh, 10 to 20 hours a week, and that you bought rental properties or bought into this business or bought some passive income somewhere where now... You're not selling because you have to. You're selling because you. And that's the secret to the whole thing. Then eventually you're like, I don't even want to anymore. I'm done. Good thing I got 100000 a month coming in all this stuff. Because now I can chill. <laughs> I like that. This, this vibe is. <laughs> this is the vibe. This is left. I feel like I've made it. Now, now this next slide is going to be a surprise for not only you, but also me. Ah, my favorite. The market never goes to zero. I told you one. Had no idea what I was going to say today. Don't laugh. It's not a joke. The market never goes to zero. This is what I learned. Okay, Closings will happen every single day for the rest of eternity, regardless of market conditions, ladies and gentlemen. You realize interest rates just hit, mortgage rates just hit 8%? Who cares? I don't. Why? Okay, look at the chart. In 2008, we had 4.12 million transactions. This year, this is even off. We're, we're going to be lower than 4.3. We're going to be around 4 million transactions. This is 2008, ladies and gentlemen. You're here. This is it. This is as bad as it's going to get. Now, what you need to understand is that prices go up and down every year. Every year. You see that? To the moon, dumb. To the moon, dumb. To the moon, dumb. Every year. They're going down in the fall. They're going up in the spring. Blah, blah, blah. Every year. It's not hard to predict what's going to happen in the market or that prices were going to come down this fall or the days in the market were going to shoot up. Inventory was going to shoot up. It happens every fall. And so the reason why I did the 30 listing challenge, you know, for the, for the fourth quarter was because if you walk into 2000, if you take advantage of what's happening now with inventory rising, days in the market going up, when days on the market go up and inventory is going up, you should be saying, saying, thank you, Jesus, because I can stack inventory. I want 30 active listings right now so that when I go into 2024, I'm on fire. It's a three month lag business. So who wants to crush it in 2024? But I'm not doing shit till January 1st. <laughs> it's a three-month lag business. You're going to start 2024 on January 1st. You're not really going to get much out of that till March. If you want to crush 2024, it's got to be all 12 months, which means what? you got to start three months before the beginning of the year really getting after it. Life or death. This is life or death. I got to go. I got to make a million bucks right now. Up, down, up, down, up, down. Take advantage of it. It's never going to go to zero. Does this, does this chart, does it go to zero? Anywhere in here. Even 2008, the worst Great Recession. Go back to the Depression in the 20s. Did prices go to zero? No. Did transactions go to zero? No. Did prices go down when the interest rates went to 19% in the late 70s, early 80s? Did, did, did prices go down? Was there year of price decreases? There were maybe some ebbs and flows. Nationally, we didn't see any negative years. We see ebbs and flows every year. The 
this is just an illustration of my business. I got back in 2008 because of what I did, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. What I did on those down years is what got me to 100 deals a year. I didn't do anything special in 2014. The sa I did the same activities, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, the same thing. Every day, it was the same stuff. I didn't change my business at all. How to get to 100 deals, two things. Snowball of people who knew who I was getting the weekly email and market resurging. See the red, that's the market. When the market resurged, my business exploded. This is your 2008. I don't know how to get this into your head. Good enough. This is your 2008. The, biz, the, the, the market is going to rebound violently. We're gonna go back to 5 million transactions violently. The question is, are you spending the time now to plant the seeds, build the relationships, put them into your database, nurture those until the sellers who, there's only, there's only, the only people buying and selling right now are what? People that have to, okay? They have to, for whatever reason, and investors. That's the only people buying and selling. What you're doing is you're taking people who aren't who who don't really need to, and you're trying to turn them into a, a, a deal. Guys, quit trying to turn people who just want to, that are probably saying they would if they could type stuff. Quit trying to figure out how to make them a deal and realize they're a deal when the market rebounds. Stack those people up. The, the way I made a million bucks a year was off people that weren't ready to buy or sell. And understanding the value of those people who knew me. The more people I can get that aren't ready the bigger my business is going to be. Because remember, I'm working for 2026. I don't care about this year. And through the process of me trying to have the thousands of conversations with people in my market to find the people that don't want to sell, I'm going to find so many people who need to today. And my business is going to be even larger than it would have been if I wasn't having the conversations. That's where I live. You guys know Alabama had beaches? I grew up here. I grew up selling all these condos. That was my specialty. My dad's still there running the listings and sales business while I'm on the road. Shout out to dad. Shout out to my mom. She had me in her hair salon answering the phone when I was eight. So I was like, basically making cold calls. <laughs> All right, come to Gulf Shores, hang out in a condo, come have some coffee with me. I might sell you a condo or two, you know what I mean? Okay, I, I got one more slide and then I'm gonna take two questions before we bring the panel back, okay? So if you got a question, think about it, hold it. We'll have a mic runner. I did, who watched the 30 listing challenge? Okay. Who wants it? It's, it's cold calling. It's direct mail. It's social media, right? I tell you how to get 10 listings in each category, right? That's 30. And it, what, who doesn't believe they can get 30 listings in the next 90 days? Okay, one, really, everybody here is that confident. Okay. How many, how many people here do not believe they can get 30 listings in the next 90 days? I haven't even got three, five in my whole life. <laughs> we get 30 in the next 90 days. What the hell is he talking about? When you watch the training, the replay of the training, you're not going to be able to unsee it and you're going to walk away and you're going to be like, wow, I actually can do this. Anyone can do what I talk about in this training, okay? You ready for it? All you have to do is text me right here. Put your contact information in and you can have it. You don't have to take a picture, you can just text right this second. <laughs> well, I'll do it later. That's like a real estate agent's famous last words. I, let me just take a picture, I'll put it on my to-do list. You can see it back there? I can't see you. Are you ready? Two, five, one, three, one, two, eight, eight, four, four.
251-312-8844. Got it? Yeah. Okay, we got a mic runner? I'm going to do two questions before I bring the panel up. Just raise your hand. Geo. I can't see anything, so I don't know. Yeah. Why are we going to have a question? Yeah, afterwards. Yeah. I'm going to be here as long as you guys want afterwards. Hey, Rishi. Well, um, a lot of a lot of your trainings and things you stress um, during the day, the weekly newsletter or weekly email. Just go to startmyweeklyemail.com, bro. What's up? Yeah, startmyweeklyemail.com. You can see every email that I sent to my clients for the last year, and there's a there's a training. You can get my templates. All nine yards. Startmyweeklyemail.com. Start my, George. Yep. So I'm curious, uh, we know buyers don't want to buy right now. When do you think buyers are going to want to start buying? I don't know, and I don't care. I could care less when buyers will want to buy. That's not, it's out of my control, and it has nothing to do with the growth of my business. I'm building my 2026 business, and anything I sell between now and then is a byproduct of what I'm doing to build my 2026 business. I know one thing, transactions will never go to zero. And there'll always be more business than I can ever do myself, right? There's, there's, more, there's more deals available to me than I could ever handle that are available to me. They're available to you, they're available to you, to every single agent in here. There's more deals available. You, the, the reason you want, you can't get to all of them because why? You have to talk to the people, create the relationship, go through their nurturing, get to the point where they're ready to do something, you know, deal, show them property, list it, get listing appointments, uh, negotiate. It's a process. You can't handle it, and you can't do, but so many. So there's, a, you, there's more than you could ever handle. So quit worrying about when buyers are going to buy. They're buying right now. There's 4 million transactions happening in the country right now for existing home sales. There's plenty of business happening. Is that what you're worried about? Lack of business? What are you worried about? What the fuck was that? The Holy shit. Wow. Oh my God. This AI shit's getting wild. Damn, I'm going to let it answer the next question. Well, what do you worry about? I'm just converting all of my renters right now into... You do rentals? Oh shit. You, the door's right there. <laughs> now, now li li listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me before I'm going to go to one more question here. Renters don't buy. Maybe. A lot of renters rent forever. Let me, let me ask you something. If you have the opportunity to talk to a limited amount of property owners that already own the property that buy and sell stuff all the time, and there's a limited amount of them to work with and talk to and create relationships with and build your business around, why would you talk to a renter? listening okay like like um transactions like buys and buy and sales what's that you could have done 250 you but you could you could have done the same work for 250 deals that make you fifteen thousand per deal it's called efficiency yeah well that's what i'm learning that that's why i'm here there you go yeah by the way good 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 get it up get it up get it up get it up what well, one more what well, one more Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey. I have a question to Portray. So my question is, we're talking about 2026, right? And they'll be 2026. Yeah. And all the business that's going on. Yeah. Now, there's many ages, like you said, that are dropping off, right? And right. maybe there's a batch here that are wondering, how am I going to get it to next month? Okay. And how am I going to get to the end of the year? Yeah. So for all of those that are wondering right now, they're suffering, what do I need to do right while the bank is here to make sure that next month I can close at least one deal to get back? And then the following month, the same thing, so that they can bank that 
to 2024 and make it to 2024? For me, step one will be to get a job. <laughs> if I'm dependent on closing a deal that's not under contract to pay my bills, I'm getting a job tomorrow. I've always had two jobs, by the way. When I was roofing houses, I was serving tables at night. When I was working on oil rig every other week, I would come back and work on my real estate business. Always had two jobs. I've been a real estate agent and a coach, same time. Always had two jobs, always. Um, so that's like, if you're in the financial situation where you can't pay your bills, time to get a job. I'm too good to work at McDonald's. Well, you might not make it if that's your attitude. I'm willing to do, it comes back to the question, are you willing to do whatever it takes? Because a lot of people say that, but do they really? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm too good for that job. Give me the job then. If, I, if I'm in financial dire stress, so that's the first thing. And I'm speaking generalities. I don't know your situation. I don't know the other agent situations in here, but that'd be the first thing. To your, to your question, what do I do to go out there and, and get a deal? I don't know what works for you. That's the work of the business. You, every single legion activity works. But what works for you? Only you can figure that out. And that's the work in the business. That's why so many agents fail because they fail to figure out what works for them in the business. Something will work for each and every one of you. But you fail to put the work in necessary to get to the point where you figured out what works well for you. And sometimes that takes a while. Sometimes they could take months or years to do that, to go through that process. I know agents, it took me eight months to get to my first deal. And that's still the same. I hear agents all the time that go eight months without their first deal, six months. Some, some do deals in their first month, which is dangerous because then they have a false sense of security of how the business actually works. I've seen a lot of people do deal their first or second month and then leave the business in eight months because they only sold either no more or maybe one other one and they couldn't get any momentum because they, they were like, oh, I made it. And they don't do anything to try to actually build the business, which is a recipe for disaster. I don't know. You're going to have to figure out what works best for you. But I can tell you this, you better be aiming to work towards talking to as many people as you can every day. You're either going to be called, you're going to call somebody, guys. You're going to call prospects or you're going to call bankruptcy lawyers. You're going to call, you know, the utility. You're going to call your landlord. You're calling somebody. Thanks, mom. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, when it comes to you getting more experience as an agent, start shadowing top producers in your office. Ask them if you can go on the listing appointments with them. Ask them if you go on showings with them. Uh, whatever you want to do right now in your business, in your local market, someone's already doing it. So you don't have to figure it out on your own. That experience, that clarity, that comes with time. It comes with repetition. No one becomes amazing at basketball or baseball or any sport for that matter without doing it over a long period of time. And the same is for real estate. So don't think of it as like you being in a place where you're at a disadvantage. If anything, you have an advantage because you have more time. So if you're a new agent in this market, it's the best opportunity, in my opinion, over the last 10 years to get started because we're headed for a complete reset where everyone's leaving. And now you have this opportunity to make your name and, and get more market share. Does that make sense? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey guys, my name is Sungo. Hey guys, I'm Nissan Dusty. I'm going with Times and Absolute Realty, or I work in the county here in Miami and Tampa. And uh, one of the things I heard everybody here talk about just a little bit was that it sounds like everybody had coach involvement at Vance. And one of the things I've been struggling with like day is uh, I had a code and we kind of started to like uh, a mentorship, so I turned up to a friendship. And so I uh, will, when you hang your careers, is it, do you realize like, all right, it's time to get a different coach? Like, and what were those things? What were those the indicators that you said? It's time to like seek a change. And then what was that change? Whenever you plateau out, I heard half the question, but whenever you uh, plateau out in your business and you feel that pressure on your shoulders, like, oh man, I could grow some more if I did, if I changed brokerages, changed coaches, or got exposed to different people. When you feel that pressure on your shoulders, because I, I was at seven different brokerages and every time I moved, it was because I just was bumping the top of where I was. And I, was, I became the top agent in that company and I learned all I could learn there. I was like, I'm not learning anything else. I'm not growing. I, my income isn't going up. I can't, I'm drowning. I'm suffocating myself. So I, had a, I went somewhere else where there were some more higher producers and uh, more to learn, uh, doing pre-construction, doing whatever, right? Um, so I just think when you, it sounds like you, you feel that pressure right now on your shoulders, like, man, I could really do some stuff if I just knew some different things. That's when. 
If you need accountability in this business, you're not going to make it. As far as when you need to take coaches, the day your coach becomes your friend, you're in trouble. Yeah. In my opinion, because your coach, your coach is not there to be your friend. Your coach is there to be your coach. There's a big difference. That's the thing, right? And talking about accountability, like I felt sometimes like we set this goal and the next conversation, I'm going to wait to get the question. And the question that we call it's like, I haven't prompted it straight. So. Also, when you're uncomfortable and you have to be uncomfortable. So if you're complacent and you're comfortable, you're not going to grow. So. Thank you, Dan. Is it time to give a little bit to a student? They might you. But you know, you need complacent. Okay. Because sometimes, for example, you need the foundation, the foundation. I'm going to use Juan Bar. Okay, because he had this structure to uh, take you from zero and with Ricky to that. And for example, if you are making more than 300 bucks a year, Ryan Serhan is all brandy, but you are not going to work on brandy. You are uh, uh, not having money to eat, right? So it depends on your level in men. <laughs> so my name is Geraldo, we we'll get in Slack. First and foremost, I want to thank every single one of you. This is incredible. I will uh, be I'm a person honest with you. My main motivation coming here was bring it to a root. I'll be in sorry. In this studio, I'm an all to be good, right? Get with. He's going to have to have behind. Get my hobby back. He gives us a full oh, train of behind. I see, right? It's kind of like you fake. The moment where everybody in that body. I'm a real person, okay? He has put up a couple of times. Apparently, he said the moment that the coach becomes a friend, you know, that's when you're in trouble because that used to worry about being nice to you, right? But we'll get full transparency, right? Now, without being said, my question um, is geared to, uh, I'm sorry about pronouncing your name. Faisal? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, a lot of time when it comes to specimens, uh, we see the, the, the beautiful numbers out there, right? Rehab costs, you know, forty thousand dollars, sixty thousand dollars, right? And you know, everybody says to see, I just know where thing was forty thousand dollars, right? So how do we control the cost where you make uh, these rehab projects realistic? We know we cannot just be calling random companies to do, you know, these projects. So the uh, where we have gotten up to here is through experiences, through developing different teams. Okay, it's you. What you are seeing is a result of over this period of number of years, the experiences that we have gotten. And again, you know, it's funny that Ricky was saying, talk to people on in real estate, talk to people when, if you are, if you want to get into uh, establishing your own team, you know, talk to people who are in the same business. Say, what do you do? Do you repair? You know, you. this is how you will build your connections. Again, relationships and connections, and that will get you figure out, you know, what is the best price for what kind of work that you do. I mean, it, yes, the construction cost has escalated a lot. So that's why the example that I showed you, uh, the second case study, it was a two bedroom, one bathroom house and it cost, it had cost us $61,000. And the first case study that I showed you, it was back in 2008, it was a four three that had cost us $40,000. You know, so there is, there are some things that you really cannot do, but through your relationships and through your experience, you continue to build the teams. And then there, you know, which team I, sometimes what you're going to have is you have a team who will do a high end work. And sometimes you will just do a, uh, a work that is just good enough to make sure everything is done right. You know, sometimes you are not looking to uh, knock it out of the park. You're not uh, remodeling a million dollar home. You're just remodeling a simple Two, two to three bedroom house that is um, mid for mid-level income or low-level income, okay? So, yes, it's difficult to co co uh, to control the cost of construction, but you have to build the team and it, it will come over a number of years and you have to talk to people, build relationships. Um, and that's that's how you will know uh, when you are ready to build your team and when you, who to go to uh, for the best price. Thank you. Hello, we have a lot of people to guess in this room. Right? <laughs> I'm sorry. So that where we have so many people to be estimates from, right? Well, once you have, uh, well, now we have like uh, four or five teams and we know 
how much uh, every team will cost us. So once you have established that uh, that structure, you will probably don't have to go as much out um, out of your teams. But yes, you should be always on the lookout of, hey, see if I can get any better because that's where the profit margins are for your investor. I'm going to deliver it to well. Hi, um, you guys are all amazing. Thank you for doing this, Ricky. I've been following you since I got my license, and I'd probably... I, I thought you were going to say since I was born. <laughs> Sorry, man. I literally... <laughs> my question is for any of you, actually. Um, I, I'm in a transition phase uh, from a probably leadership role going back in Sioux production full time, what is one piece of the bikes you leadership role from like a team leader perspective back to production? I'd have to know the whole backstory and why 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 this is happening, you know what I mean? To really advise you, you know what I mean? Um there's not really like general advice. It's kinda like when uh, you know, you're like, How do I convert this buyer? Well, I don't know why they're buying, you know, or how do I, this this seller said I'll sell in six months. How do I convert them? What do I do next? I don't know. I don't know why they're waiting six months to sell and what's going on in their life. If they're just telling you what they want to hear, I have to know what's going on. It's like being a doctor. You show up, you say, my stomach hurts. They don't just lay you down and just cut you open and be like, oh, okay, let's, let's do some surgery right here. They run tests. They ask questions. Same thing we should do as professionals. And that's, so that's the same thing for you. Like, what do I do? I'm going back to in production. Well, I don't know why you're doing that. And I have no idea what your goals are and what you're trying to do, what your current production is. There's a lot of questions that have to be answered to be able to answer that question. You know what I mean? Well, I was a high producer uh -huh. years ago, um, during the pandemic and, um, I was given an opportunity to get an opportunity to be a team leader. Wow, who like offered you, normally team leaders like do it themselves. So how do you, who offered you that? But how do you, no, a lot of questions. I'm just going to, you want to talk later, we can, but. I know you decided to deal with your stress and have to. There it is. There it is. Yeah. yeah. They start from scratch again. Go back to basic. Do a plan. Buy their leak sources and it was just done. Don't get me started on teams though, okay? Don't get me started on teams because there's some team leaders in here and team members. I'm not even going to go there. As a former team leader, I, I skilled out of production. I was one of those teams. Um, I can tell you this. Uh, when it comes to you building a successful business, uh, you could actually make more money as an independent solo agent versus managing and training and hiring other people. Uh, the issue with traditional team models where you're paying the buyer agent 50% or the listing agent 60% uh, is that it's almost like you're giving away half of all the revenue that comes in before you even touch it. And you're the one putting in the blood, sweat, and tears to build this business. When in reality, it's your business, but now you're giving out half just in sales. Um, and if you build an, a good business the right way, you still have to pay for staff, you still have to pay for marketing, you still have to pay for all these operation expenses, you're going to walk away with 10, 15% when all is said and done. So my advice to you is your database is going to be your gold mine to go out there and get more clients. Treat it the same way you treat your bank account, where you're adding to it every single day, you're nurturing it, you're staying in touch with every, every single person in there. And the second you get overwhelmed, hire an assistant, but pay them a salary. And the second you get back to that point where you want to start rebuilding and the market re rebounds, um, hire someone on a salary to show the houses. And that's when my little switch to kind of flip everything all, all around. Thank you so much. One general thing I would, I have you. One, uh, one general thing I would say is, uh, first, you need to make sure you love what you do. If you are going back into it, you need to make sure you still have a passion for it and then have the right kind of attitude. Because you, uh, what I have learned over the years is you can learn anything because what we do is not rocket science, but you have to have the right attitude and then you will be successful in anything that you will do. Thank you, Matt. All right, good afternoon. My name is Sophia Walsh. I am with the Binghamton Realty Group in Coral Springs, Florida. And then the two foot question, uh, one of the wire you mentioned that were at the May during your listing presentation, and that was pretty cool. I am a part time agent working through the school full time, and I don't have a lot to put as far as real estate on a resume. And I was just wondering what creative ways can I bring a resume? Great question. You could always use your uh, your resume from your past career. 
Uh, you could always use your background and your initiative as far as like your core values. You could put that on your resume. Uh, and then you could always use your broker statistics. Um, I always tell everyone that at the end of the day, you join a brokerage because of their brand, their support, their training, all that stuff, but you also get their local credibility. Um, and you could always go to your, your producing broker and ask them, can I go ahead and leverage some of your statistics and some of your listing on that stuff? And then you could go ahead and say, you're partnered with XYZ company, and then you could put all of their stats on that side. And then as you grow and as you build your own business, you could obviously replace their stats with yours. Yeah. And I encourage you to use the term co-career rather than part-time. Although I like that up action. So the scholars love all the things and fight the live question. You also mentioned the gorgeous niche. Um, I'm part of that white at Ocon's, you know, over and under. All these super great people and we call such thousands of people, but in the process of doing that, and you, like you mentioned, the wholesalers are comparing us to those. How, like, how do you navigate that? We're recommending that. Most of your reviews are going to be with people that actually haven't transacted yet. So if someone takes the time to actually meet with you and go through the entire process and they change their mind, you could actually ask them, listen, I know you're not ready to do something right now, but how's my service up until this point? And they say, it was awesome. You're so great. You're so responsive. Would you mind leaving me a quick review? So you don't have to think of these reviews as closed sales. Just think of them as testimonials of other people locally that appreciate you going out of your way to be a good agent. And then you can leverage those to get more reviews also. Begin. Begin. Well, what? What's this? And we got uh, Christine after this. I'm going to run the shoes. I had to get me a pair. You do? Yeah, stand way in there. Another. <laughs> Woo! Kevin, I may be a senior citizen, but I still get around. <laughs> and I have been mad. Thank you so much. You've inspired me today more so than I can even imagine. Just... And. Hold the buzz till they look at that building. And we're good. You have to understand, I have a sense of humor, and that's one of God's gifts to me. In my prior life, I've been a registered nurse for 50 years, always being service, helping others. And now I'm continuing with the service the best way that I thought so we can. I live in a, um, 55 plus community, so that's my specialty. God darn, they all die, and I get for this week. This one, bro. If hectic, I mean, there is a side, I don't kill you, did at least like, let me give it to you, you know. But I just you know, this cheesy sled, uh, and I just want to thank you. I came from Waterdale Lakes today, and I know people came further than me. Um, my office is in Hialeah, so I chuck down there all the time. And this year is going to be my year. I get it. I'm very, very fortunate to have lived 74 years right now. Amen. And um, the only thing I said thank you all for is the motivation, the inspiration, and kicking me in the ass where I really needed to. <laughs> Thanks, you. Did it to work. Thank you, sir, please. Hi, everyone. I'm Mark. I just want to say thank you. Really, really, it's part of my PA and I. I learned so much um, from everyone and breaking your right biggest motivators. Looking forward to coffee to the end is I really wasn't disappointed. In fact, he's cutting bed. And he's <laughs> he started something with the hugs. I can see it back home, but I I did really um sir, you are half the most on the being in me and I'm I don't want to put it. Go for it. Oh not not a fucking I've been here today, right? And putting with me and I'll be some of the thing, but I definitely need five need five to you. Hey, is there do you work with agents to three dental or no? Of course. 
I thought like you were you, you were trying to say I said I need finance to the second front. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. And the gentleman beside you, uh, what you said to was very, very motivating for me, especially. I'm getting it. Yes, absolutely. It's right. Okay, so um, everyone, please notice all of our phone numbers are right here. Okay. Thank you so much. And again, thanks everyone. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Question of the day. I. Woo! Um, Ted, do you see this, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm like, the fire. Everybody's going to crush it. And thank you for contributing to everyone's future success. Um, everybody's just chilling. Work life balance. What do you have to say? Any advice? Those folks waiting at home to get into stasis plus one, you walk through that door, you don't have to say a word. They sense your stress, they sense your frustration, right? The very next day, you may have a fantastic day, you're going to come in with a big smile. Emotional roller coaster, right? Work life counts. Thank So you need to find someone that can do the thing that for a company, at least, uh, for example, is she for to me? Hire an assistant to do all the and in B, but uh, being able to take care of the baby myself, okay? Because she is unable to attend to a daycare, so that's a uh, that was a concern to me. Like, oh my God, I'm no you know productive and no uh, what what not. But then I called my assistant to do all of the new stuff, and now I have more time. I'm being more productive, so that's my my answer to that. So I first real estate 23 years ago. I was pregnant with my third child, um. So I raised my kid in real estate, and what helped me with that was then I used the back platform. I used TTA. I used sports. I used that to. Do grow my business, and that's where I remember. Um, but having a strong partner, having a strong office, a strong broker that supports you, where you need to ask questions, especially like when you're new. You have to have a broker that's present that will get into your call because you don't want to get into a situation where, you know, you're, you get presented from them, right? So always have somebody that you can ask questions to, um, and really that's kind of in my game. Um, hopefully you don't walk in and get a haircut. Hopefully you make an appointment right to get a haircut. All I'm going to say is elevate yourself to the level of professionalism that you deserve. And when you do that, people make you buy appointment. And take your, you know, take whatever you're using for your calendar and work your family in and say, I'm sorry, I'm busy at that time. It's okay to do that. You don't have to say I'm busy cooking dinner, really. We just say, I'm quiet at that time. So just always um, treat yourself like the professional that you are. Do those and please take looks like the professional that you are. That's how you can be in um, way found. But you just don't, we don't have to be available for every guy at any time. People smell desperation. Okay. Awesome. Well, all right. Uh, we can be just you with some gold cotton on us to put hand on. That's what our, you learn from nothing. It's really, you know, settle your time off. You have time to make your family, your vacation, before you settle your time off. With that being said, we're going to wrap it up for the day. Thank you, everyone, for having me.